Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to today's video because I don't think it's a Friday, I think it's a Tuesday, this is going out. So normally I'd be doing repots today, I'm actually not. I'm going to lift up what I do have for you in a moment, but essentially I have two buckets of plants that are recent imports. I'm going to go through them, I'm going to check for any rot, any yellow leaves, anything like that. I'm going to cut that off if need be and then they're going to go back in the bucket and after I've finished filming, I'm probably going to refresh the water, leave them there for a little bit longer because these plants have had quite the journey. I'm also, as it happens, really unhappy with the quality of some of these plants, so I may or may not mention it whilst we carry through the video. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you about my awesome t-shirt, if you can't already see here. It says no one should live in the closet and I couldn't agree more. I absolutely wholeheartedly support any type of gay rights, any kind of LGBTQ rights on this channel, Black Lives Matter, anything of the sort. So if that's not something you agree with, if you think for some reason that people shouldn't be allowed to love each other how they wish, there is a little button, I'm pretty sure, at least if you're on web, I think if you look beneath the video next to my name, there should be a little button. Uh, depending on whether you've subscribed or not, that button might say unsubscribe. If you could click that, that would mean the world to me and the rest of us here. Thank you very much for that. So anyway, on the subject of this t-shirt, by the way, I picked this up from Amazon of all places. I know the quality isn't unbelievable, but it's it's quite good. And I think the message is, is abundantly clear. Plus, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. But I picked this up on Amazon. And honestly, guys, honestly, their LGBTQ or like the, the gay pride stuff that they have is absolutely lit. So I'll leave the link to that down below. I'll leave the link to this t-shirt as well because it kind of hits two birds with one stone. Um, it was either this or I think there's a t-shirt that said, uh, sounds gay, I'm in. Or there was another one as well. I, I can't remember which one it was. There was another one I was going to go for, but I didn't. This one took it for me. Oh, there was one that mentioned Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. I think I'm going to get that one as well. After I finish filming, I'm going to buy that one because it's awesome. But have a look on Amazon if you want this t-shirt or something similar. Honestly, guys, their selection is absolutely lit. So anyway, while my subscriber count is going down, I'm going to try and lift up these buckets to show you what's in them because this is the best way. I am going to have to just take them out of the bucket in batches and then we'll, we'll do it that way. And then we'll have a little chat because I have your questions as usual. But let me just try and lift this up. It's not easy. It has to be said, it's not easy. Here, right. Oh my God. This here is philodendron atabapuensi. This here is philodendron bilotai. There you go. That's all I can lift. Oh. I know I need to go to the gym, okay? I know, I have chicken wings, I know. I'm working on it, I'm going to the gym later today. Just give me like 10 years, I'll be ripped, it'll be great, okay? It'll be great, I'm working on it. Until then, I am an absolute weakling. So I'm gonna get, I think I'm gonna start with Atabapuensi because it looks the shittest. And I think whether there's rot or not, I don't know, I doubt it. They've only been in there a couple of days. I don't think any rot from imports will settle in yet. That's normally a couple of weeks. But I've certainly got some yellow leaves. So we'll just check them out, shall we? We'll just check out what's here. So I'm going to grab some and we'll just go in batches. And I think when they're done, I'll put them on the floor. And then at the end, I'll put them back in the bucket because there's no other way. So this is a bit soggy. It's a bit gross. You can kind of see. Um, it's basically, I'm doing this one because it needs done. Two, it keeps the lecker noise down, I guess. So, okay. And a few questions. I've written them down. Uh, the first one was Happy Pride Month. A few people said it. Thank you. Happy Pride Month to you too. Um, right. I have a few. Some of them are a little bit meaty. Some of them aren't. Uh, I'm straight off the bat, do you ship outside the UK? Yes, absolutely. I actually ship internationally. I have some plants up at the moment. As of watching this video, I don't know if they're sold out or not because I don't actually know when this video is going up. Um, so they, they may or may not be there, but I've had a recent restock anyway. I do ship internationally. The only place I'm not really shipping to at the moment is Germany because there are a few known issues with Germany. So that is not happening at the moment. I will let you know if I do, obviously. Um, USA, absolutely. I've shipped to places like Israel, everywhere. I ship everywhere, really. I don't ship to Canada yet, but we are working on it. I don't have a specific update for you on that either, by the way. I know a few people asked. I don't have an update on that. But that's a really quick fire one. Um, a few other people, a few people actually, were asking me about my makeup that I had on in my 10 plants that acclimate well video. And what I have on now, I'm mentioning it because I have on now something very similar. I don't know how well I can get up this camera without it like overloading. Can you see it there? I don't know. Hey, I don't ever want to be this close to a camera. Look at my chins roll out. So I have something very similar on now. 
Um, it's probably just a bit of a lighter version. I think on that video, I did more of a, a darker, smoky version. This one's definitely a lighter version of that. If you're interested in what this is and how I've done the whole thing, I suppose, um, leave a comment down below because I think, I think this weekend I might be able to film some videos for my second channel. I'm going to do a couple of them in bulk. So one of them might include makeup, but it might just be like a get ready with me because I'll just film me getting ready to do my other videos. So if you want to see that, then let me know and I'll probably do a video on it. I don't know where I'm going to throw the nasties. I guess I'll just throw them behind me. So this one's actually not that bad, to be honest. This one's okay. Oh, there's two. Okay. So this is kind of what I've been getting. I mean, that, what is that? That probably classes as a plant, by the way. Um, I've, I've got some issues with the quality of this shipment for sure. I'm pretty sure that this supplier, I hold that up there. I'm pretty sure that my supplier classes that as a plant. Needless to say, they will not be my supplier anymore. Um, these again, not very good. Now you're probably thinking, right, okay, well, some root, they look healthy. What's the problem? The problem is guys, I ordered these plants in, I believe it was, it was either February or March 2020 before COVID hit. So these plants were paid for and they were on order for over a year. And I do not condone quality like this when the plants have been on order for that long. You feel me? It's not good. It's not good. So sorry if I end up bitching about that. It's just, it's kind of been waved in front of me a little bit here because I've got a ton of plants that I don't know what I'm going to do with. So I've got some, some mush on these. Right. Another question. Oh, Apparel, since we're, we've had a little bit of a chat on Apparel today. Apparel through the shop. So a lot of people, obviously I don't have it on now, a lot of people have been asking me about a rare plant shop t-shirt, essentially. Um, and I, I haven't really done one, but I, it's getting kind of hard to ignore the volume of people that kind of want them. So I guess what I'm about to say is, let me know if that is something that you would like. And I will probably add it to my merch. Um, I do have merch. I think it's linked. I think it's automatically linked under my videos. I do have, eh, there's a little bit that needs cut off. I do have some merch linked. So I will probably add it to that if it's something that you want. So let me know. I'm really curious because I didn't know that that many people wanted a Rare Plant Shop t-shirt. <laughs> but if it's something that you want, I can absolutely sort that for you. So let me know down below. There's no real reason why I haven't um, done it sooner. I just... I, don't know, I didn't think people cared really. So I'm very flattered. Thank you. If you would like that, then let me know. Now, this one isn't so bad, this plant here. If that counts as one plant, that's fine. What I look for in a good supplier, by the way, is, uh, is consistent quality. It's not very good for me if I buy a plant and that's considered a plant, but also that is. Do you know what I mean? Just offer me this plant at a lower price or offer me this plant at a higher price. I don't like inconsistent sizing personally. It kind of, it annoys me a lot because it throws me off for then acclimating and selling them on and having like a standardized output of this shop. It really affects us. Um, not only that, but you're paying the same size for something like this as you were, you know, like a tiny, I don't know where it's gone, like a tiny little one. They're very inconsistent. And again, I ordered them a year ago. I don't really expect that much inconsistency. No, plants aren't all the same, but come on now. We'll see, we'll see just how consistent they are as we go through, shall we? Because I'm quite curious because I will tolerate quite a bit when it comes to sizing difference, but some of these, and let me show you the bill of ties when we get to them, they are ridiculous. Yeah, so if you want any apparel, let me know. I will get to work on that. Sorry, I'm very itchy. I'll get to work on that as soon as I can. If that's something that you guys would like to have, um, I'll probably do what I do for mine. Do like black and white, um, and just have those as color options. Someone asked me, are you ever going to offer rare Maranta in the shop? And the answer is yes. <laughs> I've been growing out a couple of specifically uh, Maranta silver bands. And that one, my mother anyway, is, is of good size. I have two more that are not of good size, two more silver bands that I bought from elsewhere and they were just, they were just lower quality. I have two of those, but they're not ready. So I can start propagating them, but they're not going to come out at any real speed. There's, they're probably going to be one-offs when they come out. And that's for quite a while because I just need to get more mother plants. So the answer is yes, but it would really have to be, you know, you'd have to get there quick on the website, I think, because I don't really think that they're going to be there for very long. Um, I've cut this off, by the way, because I can see that this is very, very mushy right here. So I've removed that because I know it's going to go to mush. Then it'll fall off then it'll be in the water, 
then the water is mucky and no one likes it. So that's that one. Whizzing through these guys, whizzing through these. Oh, what is this? What is this? Does that count as a plant? Enlighten me, because that's rot there, by the way. You ever want to see what rot looks like in an import? Because this import, it's been here for 48 hours or less, I think. That's what rot is like. I can pull that all the way off the sheath. Well, snap there, but it, would have, it was quite happy to come all the way off. That is the start of rot. These roots are absolutely ugh. I pull that off there as well, and I pull that there off as well. Now, a few people tend to ask me what I do with regards to rot. I'll just leave that there, shall I? Um, the answer is I have a full video on it that I've done very recently. I will link that down below if you want to see it. But I have a full video on how to deal with it um, and how to prevent it as well. How to spot it, how to deal with it, how to prevent it. It's very good. Or at least I'm told it's very good. So if you want to see that, I will leave that down below. I'm going to take that off. You know what? I'm going to take that off because it's yellow. Why not? Why not? What's the point in waiting, right? So take that off and leave it there. Just throw those down. We need another question. Don't worry, I do have meaty questions. I know these are all very quick fire. I do have some meatier questions. So someone asked me about the prices of Monstera Oblique versus uh, Variegate Ansonii. And I think it was a couple of people actually. And you basically said, like, explain it. How does that even work? I don't understand. Um, because Oblique is notably rarer than um, Monstera Ansonii Variegata. Variegate Ansonii. And Honestly, guys, this is a classic example, Perio. This is a classic example of demand and what people want and what people don't want. Now, I'm going to say something on Monstera Oblique because the amount of shit I've had for my original video on Oblique is insane. Basically, I put out a video, I think it's two years old now, basically talking about how rare Oblique is. And then a sea of people have come along a little bit newer to the game, say, and they basically said, this is bullshit, they're everywhere kind of thing. And on that front, it is now applicable to talk about it. Yeah, they kind of are everywhere now. They're, nearly everyone can find a way of getting one, I think. I think that's fair to say. If you're on Facebook, you probably find one. I sell them still as well. And they are a lot more available than what they were, for sure. Oh my God, I've got more rot. Look at this. They're fucked. Oh, what a shame. Look at this. Just when you think they're fine. That one's fine. That's, mm, that's gone. I'll sterilize these afterwards, but I'm cutting that off because I know it's gone. What am I going to do with that? I'll just cut it off. No point keeping it. Really, there's no point keeping it. Just cut that. That is also dead. Sorry, you might not be able to see in great detail what I'm doing. Just just know that I'm cutting raw off. We'll leave that one as it is, I think. Um, yes, yeah, so they're more available now. And part of the reason for that is that they grow very quickly and they run a lot. So you can get a lot of uh, nodes. The thing I will say is that what tends to be sold more than anything else are uh, oblique nodes that aren't even, um, they're not growing. They're just, they're literally a, a, a chunk of runner. Um, I don't advise that you necessarily go for those if you don't know what you're doing, because to get them to actually sprout is not very easy. There is a little bit of a trick to it, but I'm not going to tell you what that is because it's a trade secret, but there is a trick to getting them to sprout really quickly anyway. Um, but yeah, so they're available everywhere. Now, Adansonii variegata are, what the hell? How is that a plant in comparison to the others? Anyway, enough bitching. Adansonii variegata are also kind of everywhere and they are being sold. But the price of, say, and this is, this is so subjective, remember this. Um, Europe, the last time I checked, variegated Adansonii two leaf. Is it between one and two thousand? Whether that's euros or pounds, or is it dropped? It might have dropped to a thousand. I'm not sure. For a small oblique, maybe that tall, you might be around about a thousand. So whether it's just under or just over, somewhere in that arena, you're hitting around about a thousand. So it is cheaper. And basically, people want variegation. It's, it's the head or tail of it. It's a variegated anything costs more. You can have one of the various plants in the world. I think unless it's like a philodendron spiritus sancti, nine times out of 10, no one cares. Even if it is rare, people just want the variegated stuff. And that's very much what is considered, you know, the sexy thing to have at the minute. Excuse me while I just grow up some roots. But these aerials have not survived. It's really interesting. The aerials have not survived. The main roots kind of have. That's what I'm finding so far. 
like a mushed up leaf on that. So I think that is why you're seeing that. And I do think the price of Oblica is cheaper. Yes, more people have it. Yes, it's growing quick. But a lot of the Oblica that are for sale, they're not full Oblica half the time. They are just chunks of uh, runners that aren't rooted or anything. So I wouldn't really count that in that estimate, if that makes sense. But yeah, I think it's just because they are noticeably harder to grow, I think, Oblica compared to Variegate and Sony Eye. Um, and that contributes as well, to be honest. I think that is why most people go for the variegated Ansonia. They are dropping very fast, though. I know a lot of uh, growers, should we say, get annoyed with me when I say that because they think I'm going to perpetuate it more. Um, I, I disagree, to be honest. I don't really talk about it, but the uh, prices on those kind of plants are coming down, I would say. And it is just because they are everywhere and people are buying them and, and selling them on. And that, that is the thing. That's what happens with everything. Eventually, in a few years, guys, they'll come around again and they'll be rare again. It's like everything. It's very cyclic. What is super, super rare now, super, super expensive now, will get to a point where it's almost common. And then it'll be so common that no one cares. People stop buying it. Manufacturers stop making it. And then it starts to become rare again. It's, it's a long cycle. Don't get me wrong. It's not like annual. It's several years. But this is how it works. It comes around. There might be a point where Oblica isn't really sold anymore because no one cares and it's too close to Adansonii that is essentially easier, right? So that's my opinion anyway on why the Adansonii is more, despite being more common, because it is still more common than the, um, the Oblica. I'm not saying, you know, it's super common, but it is more common. I think that's why. People want to pay more because they want variegated stuff. Um, personally, on popular opinion, I don't really care about variegated stuff that much. It really depends what it is. If it's something variegated that there's hardly any of them in the world or something like that, it's really special, then I'll care. But a lot of my favorite plants are non-variegate plants, like Gloriosum is one of my favorites. Most of the heart-shaped philodendrons that are my favorites, they are just plain green. So for me, I lean towards that side. Plus, you know what you're getting. It's not an investment that's going to fail on you is quick, right? Because you don't have to fight reversion and, and stuff like that. So that's basically my long-winded answer anyway on why I think, hang on, is, there, is that snapped? Yeah, it's snapped there. On why I think that the the variegated Antonia is more. It's trendier, it's cooler, it's like the thing to have. Oblica had its moment, I think, was it a year ago, something like that, where it was, it was the cooler plant. Now it's variegated Antonia. It'll come back around because it always does. This is just how it works. Oh, that's a rod off too. Seriously, these aerials have not lasted at all. This is just dead, dead, dead. Now I said I'd be checking for rot, guys. I didn't really think I was gonna find this much of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not tons of it, but it's way more than what I expected to find. So next question, looking down. Oh, someone asked me what got me into buying designer stuff. I know this is like a slight segue from plants for a little bit, but there's been a couple of things I bought this year that you would call designer, like handbags or whatever. I don't really know how I got into it. I think I, well, I kind of do know how I got into it. That's a lie. So basically, I've never had that much money. And for the last 10 years of my life, at least, I've never really had much at all. And I famously did up this place last year. So I didn't do anything all year. I was wearing t-shirts and my lovely paint-ridden jogging bottoms that I still wear now um, to work. So I didn't do anything. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. Um, and my wardrobe, guys, it was so bad because I'd been buying um, like super fast fashion to film in, things like Pretty Little Thing. I don't think you've got that in the US. Maybe you do. I don't know. Um, stuff like that, like really fast fashion. It just falls to bits after one use. I got into a really bad cycle of buying all of that stuff to film videos and it was like, right, okay, this lasts a month, this lasts a month, um, but it'll be okay because I'll just film with it for a bit and then buy some more and then at least it keeps it fresh. Um, so I started doing that and I just, it got to the end of the year last year and I shit you not, I had no clothes, I had nothing that was decent, everything I had was falling apart. So what I did, and this isn't exactly designer, but what I did was I went through hmm, so much rock, I went through all of my stuff and, oh my goodness me, I went through all of my stuff and I basically threw it out. Now I threw it out because, 
most of it was clothes that I'd had since I was like 19. And my style is much different from when I was 19. So I threw it all out. I mean, I didn't throw it all out. I had bits and pieces left, but generally my wardrobe was very blank. I put everything in bin bags and I put them in a room. I shut the door and I left them. So I didn't throw them away. I've actually since donated them. Um, but I left them there just to make sure that, you know, I really did want to throw them away and everything else. And it wasn't a bad decision. So shortly after Christmas, it was actually before the second lockdown hit, I, I went shopping. I uh, did like three days shopping. And in those three days, I basically, I replaced my entire wardrobe with stuff. Granted, it was quite wintry stuff, but I replaced my entire wardrobe. And in that time of like finding out what my like 31 year old fashion is, because that was a thing for me. I know this sounds ridiculous, guys, but that was a thing for me. Um, during that, you know, finding that out, I, I got into just watching videos on different YouTubers and just you know, how to wear neutrals, all that sort of stuff. And they all had these handbags. I didn't know what they were at the time because I've never followed that kind of thing. Um, but all these these girls had these beautiful handbags. I was like, oh, that's nice. That looks great. Obviously, I found out they were designer handbags. And I thought, you know what? I might treat myself to one. If I buy good staples in my wardrobe and then I add to that something nice like a bag or something, I think it'll look really great. It'll last for years. Um, if you don't know, designer handbags are actually really good investment pieces because you can... You can buy them and you can sell them on, essentially, if you don't like them. So I thought I'd do that. Not only that, but the bag specifically was prompted because of my Invisalign, because I've never previously really carried bags around with me. But because I have Invisalign, there's like a whole bunch of shit that I have to carry around with me. So I thought, hey, this is a great time to just invest in, say, a designer handbag, if that's what I want, if I see one that I like. So that's essentially what I've been doing. I do think the quality is a lot better, not in all cases, um, but I think the quality is a lot better than regular stuff. I'm not saying you can't get good handbags for cheap quality. I'm just saying that's that's basically my segue into it. I bought bits here and there, handbags, a couple of pairs of shoes, I think stuff like that, nothing major, but I'm really enjoying kind of like supplementing my wardrobe. And I got a new bag the other day that no one has seen yet anyway. I don't know if it's up as recording this. I don't think it is. But I got a new handbag the other day and it was a great experience. Um, I'd saved up for it for months. And this is something that I'd saved up for for so long. I've even mentioned it actually in a couple of... Oh, there's some Cebu in here. I didn't realize. I mentioned this in a couple of older videos, older reports. I used like walking into a designer shop to look at handbags as like an example. Um, I think... Sorry, I've got hair on my face. I think I used it as an example of like price shaming or something um, because I was walking in looking at something that I wanted to buy and very recently I've been able to purchase it. That's basically what got me into them. I don't want to make that answer too long because I'll just talk about it on my second channel, right? Because no one cares. Any hate comments that I get from saying anything I've just said, you need to know in advance. I don't give a shit. Um, I work very hard and what I choose to buy is up to me. And I'm sorry, but the way I see it, honestly, this might be an unpopular opinion. I don't know. The way I see it, a designer handbag for me is a better investment than half of these houseplants because these can die. I'm now cutting rot off these. There's a thing. Do you know what I mean? I'm cutting rot off these and they, they could quite easily die on me. Um, the bag will not. The bag, if you buy correctly, they won't even depreciate. Half of them will actually go up in value over the years. So I see it as a good investment and my... Uh, feelings towards the prices are admittedly very skewed because, you know, in this shop, I will buy a house plant or plants or whatever, and I might stick a plant in a box worth £3,000. And either I'm sending it out and I know I have to replace it or refund it if it goes wrong. It's happened a lot. Or I am buying something in and if it dies, it dies, right? My feelings on spending that kind of money and the guarantee of something being viable it's very twisted. You need to know that. Obviously, it's very twisted. What am I doing? Um, compared to probably a lot of other people's, it just depends what you're into. It depends how much money you spend. Um, and I think everyone has something. Do you know what I mean? Everyone has something that they spend money on or like to spend money on or aspire to spend money on. For me, at the minute, it's, it's that really. Um, trying to add some nice stuff that I enjoy wearing. So that's the reason for that. And that's kind of what got me into it. It was actually, of all things, Invisalign, and clearing out my wardrobe. Who'd have thought?
In addition to that, I have had a lot of people asking me how I get my Hoya to bloom so much. Honestly, I was thinking about this because I thought, oh my gosh, I need to be able to help you guys out with that because it seems to be a thing that a lot of people are struggling with. And by that, I don't mean that I'm not struggling. I just haven't tried. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I have a few Hoyas uh, upstairs that are, are blooming the house. I know you've seen it. I've got a Hoya sunrise at the minute that won't stop. And I mean, it won't stop. It's got easily, and I mean easily, about 15 peduncles on the one plant. Um, I'll start by saying that I bought that plant and it had not as many peduncles as it does now. I bought it late last year, I think. And I think it was the end of summer. It was at some point while I was doing this place up anyway. And it had a couple on. It's definitely got a lot more on now. I think what's happened is it's it could be the heat. I don't know. I bought it and it was reasonably mature. Not, a, not what it is now, but it was reasonably mature. So... I have that, but I also have some younger ones that have peduncles on as well. It really does depend on the plant. Obviously, every horror is different, right? Um, what I suspect it could be, I haven't fed them too much, but I have been feeding them. In addition to that, it is very hot up there. I've got to tell you that. Now, I don't know a whole bunch about Hoya. I don't know what makes them thrive specifically. I just seem to be naturally getting them to thrive, survive, whatever have you. And I think... Some of that must be heat, right? Because there is a lot of light there, cool. But if you have your Hoya in a window, you've probably got the same amount of light as I have in places. I don't think it's particularly, you know, insane up there. But what is insane in here is A, the humidity, and B, the temperature. So if I just walk off camera right now, bear with me, I will tell you what it is in here. Now, I did actually drain this unit before I started filming uh, so that I could basically not die. And right now it is showing me, wow, okay, the humidity is rising fast. So I drained it to about 50%. The humidity is now 64 and it's rising. I then have the temperature at 28.1 degrees. And believe me, that was a lot warmer this morning. It's cooled down again because I opened the door to let in some, some air so I can breathe. Because I just did two videos before this and honestly I was dying. So it could be to do with that. I'd love to be able to tell you what it is. I'd love to be able to help you out. Um, I guess the best thing to do would be to look in the comments section of this video because I will now invite people to essentially write in comments what they think helps them get higher blooms. I can't really give you any advice, but what I can do is create a forum for you to maybe find out. So my theory is humidity and maybe heat. I'd like to think heat more than anything. I'm not sure, but I don't think it's feed. I don't think it's light. Obviously, maturity does come into it. Honestly, what? I could cut those off because they're obviously like not looking great. I'm not going to because then it would be a stick. But these are not it, guys. These are not it. The Cebus are better, but even then they vary a lot. Like this one is nowhere near like some of the other ones. They're just so variable. It doesn't matter. They'll be here with me a while. So that's the Hoya taken care of, I guess. Just look in the comments, see if anyone said anything, I guess. That would be a great way to start. If you know of a way of getting peduncles going, getting blooms, then be my guest in the comments. Feel free. I think we'd all love to share the knowledge. Because what else are these videos for, right? It's not to listen to me bitch all day, so. Well, some of you love that. It has to be said. Some of you love that. But if you know anything about blooming hoyas, please write it down below because I'm, I'm admittedly not an expert. My thing is arrows, so I'm still learning a lot about higher and well, anything about them, to be honest. Next question. Oh, we've got two and then Meteor. And I think, yeah, okay. So I have two questions. Uh, which one do I tackle first? Okay, let's tackle this one. It wasn't really a question. It was kind of like a statement with a question mark on the end of it. But someone basically asked me about Spiritus being in TC production. Right, so I'll start with the basics, just in case you have absolutely no idea what TC is. If you don't know what TC is, it stands for tissue culture, and I do have a full video on that. As it happens, I will link it down below if this conversation is lost on you and you don't know what it is. So it's basically tissue culture, and what tissue culture is, is where you take a part of a plant, well, let's use one right now, I've got one right here, if it actually decides it's gonna separate, there we go. You take a piece of a plant, you put it in a sterile environment, and you 
essentially grow it in vitro. So you grow it in a glorified test tube in a lab and it will, if you give it the right recipe of growth hormones, etc., it will clone itself at a very fast rate. And what you end up with are plants maybe like one inch tall and then they are taken out, they're acclimated to say this environment and then they're grown out and then they get bigger and then that's your plants. Now, any plant that you've got pretty much from a, like a garden center, like a common plant in your house, they've been produced this way. Literally, literally, nearly every plant, it's how it's done. It wasn't back in the day, don't get me wrong, but it's essentially how it's done now because it's very cost effective when you get it right. It's very cheap to do once you get it right. Um, and you can produce large volumes very quickly. It's great. Spiritus in TC. It was rumored for a while. Um, I can confirm. I don't know if it needed confirming. Um, I didn't know if it was deemed to be a secret or not. I think it was for a while. Don't get me wrong. I think it was for a while. I think people tried. Um, basically, Spiritus, Thrilldender and Spiritus Sancti. Sorry, my words are mincing a lot today. I'm very hungry. Thrilldender and Spiritus Sancti is now in TC production. And we do have um, TC plants coming out. They exist. They're out. Now, I've seen mixed reactions to this, and I think this is based on a very, very big myth. Um, so I've seen a lot of people say, and I will just give you my honest perspective because that's what we're here for. There's a lot that I'm going to say today people might not like. That's just the same as any video. No, by the way, it ain't negative. If you can't handle a frank conversation, I think you're in the wrong place anyway. What I'm about to say is not negative on this subject. But so a few people have stuff to say about Spiritus being in CC. And I do think it comes from a myth. That myth was started, I believe, it wasn't a myth, I guess it was a rumor. Let's, let's not make it sound quite as bad. A rumor that was started a couple of years ago, something like that, that all TC plants are super weak and inferior. And I don't honestly know why that myth has taken hold as much as it has. Like TC is seen to be, um, just something that's generally frowned upon. It's actually a really good way of propagating plants. And in the case of super rare plants, it's great because you're, in a lot of cases, you're saving a species. If it's something like Spiritus Sancti, great. You have less people going out and collecting them from the wild, for example, or trying. And now you can get them. It's, we'll get into that. You can kind of get them more available that have been produced in a lab from the original plant, by the way. Um, but they've been produced in a lab. So it actually takes a lot of the heat off. Um, poaching and stuff like that. So in a lot of respects, TC is quite good. So you have that. Um, the, the issue about them being weaker, honestly, it is as simple as this. The quality of a tissue cultured plant depends 100% on the mother plant used. So you could find, and this was a huge thing, I don't know why it was a huge thing, with Raphidophora tetrasperma, right, notably comes to mind. I have a few on the wall somewhere. I don't know where they are. Oh, I've got one here. I'll tap it. I don't know if you can see. I've got one here. They're kind of, oh, slapping my queen. They're kind of all about. So there was a thing a while ago with Raphidophora tetrasperma that, oh, the TC, that's all weak and stuff like that. And I think because people were picking out the fact that the TC plants were apparently weaker than a non-TC plant, um, TC was just bad in general. And honestly, it seriously comes down to this. The quality of a tissue cultured sample, batch, whatever you have it, seriously guys, is down to the mother plant used. If you use a weak mother to produce all of your TC from, yes, you're going to have weak specimens from your tissue culture. What should be done is you take a very decent mother and you take a good selection of mothers. You don't just keep taking the same TC, you know, plant and then taking that and TCing more because it does usually make it weaker over time. You get weird mutations and all the rest. That's how people are able to sell super weird one-off, you know, Monstera and stuff like that. It's coming from mutations in tissue culture. Now, on one hand, people are saying it's weaker. On the other hand, people are paying 10 times more money for example, a variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma. And the reason that we have variegated Raphidophora tetrasperma is because of TC production. And I tell you now, there's going to be more and more pop up. It will get to a point, and I mentioned this on a recent video in Plant Hall that may or may not be up now. It might not be. It might be the next video you see. Um, you can get lucky when you go to garden centers and stuff like that. You can get TC plants. 
um, with variegation on. It can happen. It can happen. It happened to me very recently. So I, I don't know why TC is snubbed that much. No, it's not, you know, taken from a cutting from, um, you know, you, your friend or, or a well-known seller or something like that of a certain plant, but it is still a viable plant. It is only as strong as the mother. So I think there has been questions raised about the strength of spiritus tissue cultured plants. And the answer to that is they're as strong as the mother. They're as strong as the mother or they're as strong as the selection of mothers used. That determines how strong the plant will be. It is not the case that a tea seed plant is weaker than the original. That is a myth. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why that's come about. I think maybe there's just not a ton of information out there on tissue culture and it, it's kept, you could say behind closed doors. And I think that's just due to the fact that it's so lucrative. People aren't saying anything, of course. So you have that. That's all I'll say about the quality. You know, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's only as good as the mother plant. Generally, they won't even be surviving. You won't see them unless they've survived and they've been of some quality. Because I tell you now, when you take a plant out of vitro that is that tall, it is grown in 100% humidity. It's grown in sterile conditions. And it's grown in a very specific way in a laboratory. The second you introduce that plant to spores in the air, when they're taken out of these containers or whatever have you, and then they are acclimated, you get a huge drop off of plants dying in that process, right? And you'll never see them. You'll never see them. They're dead. So by the time you get plants that are maybe like that tall, they've already survived that and they're well on their way. So when you see plants around about that size, you know, not one inch basically, you know that they're strong enough because they've survived that process. And I've seen that process firsthand many times in person. And I can tell you it's grueling and there is a high loss rate. There just is. Obviously some plants, again, are inherently tougher than others. That's how it works. That's why at my shop, I have some things that grow better than others, some things that don't. Some things are an absolute bitch. It's how it is. But generally speaking, the plants that come out that are of size, so you know, this size or whatever, they're okay. You know what I mean? This has probably been tea seed. I'll tell you now, this will, this will be a stem of tea seed plants. This particular plant here, I'm not saying it's grown from a TC situation, but I'm saying its mother probably has, 100%. I know these things are in TC. I've seen them myself. You wouldn't believe the plants are in TC if I told you. Literally, you shit a brick. Trust me, there's a lot of plants there that are tea seed. Um, and I think people are, are now not saying that things are tea seed because they've caught on to the fact that people think there's something up with TC. So that's a thing. Now then, oh boy. So as far as the spiritus thing goes, yes, they're in TC. I know this because I'm able to offer some soon, by the way. Um, I'm not hiding that. That is a fact. That's on my website. I've mentioned that before on my Instagram. I do have some to offer soon. I do have a very low quantity. And I can tell you that that is the case for, I think, anyone that is able to offer these TC plants. And I can tell you that the price on these are not going to come down very quickly. Ah, this is just one of these situations where I'm just going to say something and hopefully it doesn't bite me in the ass. But this obviously is a situation where the people that are producing this plant are going to deliberately hold numbers back. This I'm talking about spiritus here specifically. They're going to deliberately hold numbers of spiritus back to keep the price high. Because as we have been able to observe with a lot of other plants that hit the market, right? Hasn't really happened with variegated monstera because again, it's been held back. I've talked about this before. Um, I, I can't really think of an example right now. Variegated Andersonii, it's everywhere, right? The price is dropping. Now, people producing this plant and the growers at the top that are able to buy it firsthand because they're the ones with the most money. It starts at the top. They know this. They can see the way plant trends go. They can see what we're all buying, how we consume, how rapidly we consume, how rapidly things enter the market, spread, propagate down, become everywhere. They can see this. And obviously, the, the, the work involved in tissue culturing asparagus, I can tell you now, I've cut mine uh, a while ago because it was suffering from a little bit of rot. I think it was just in the pot too long. It didn't, it didn't do well. So I ended up cutting mine in two. I still have it, by the way. It's fine. 
Um, I can tell you that cutting asparagus is not a fun thing to be doing. And if I, I imagine that the people at the top will have only had a couple of goes at this to get this right. This isn't something that you could probably try a ton of times because it's spiritus, right? I can't even imagine how scary that is. They know how difficult it would be because it's not the easiest propagator spiritus I find personally. It's very, very scary. Um, they know the value of these plants, guys. They're not stupid. They know how much things go for. If you think that the growers at the top on sat meticulously watching all the auctions that you guys are having, that we are having. I've had them. I don't have them anymore because I'm not in the EU and all the good shit seems to be in the EU. So I'm not really participating in them anymore. But if you think that these nurseries aren't literally sat there watching what you guys are doing in auctions and stuff and the prices things are going for, they know how quickly by now, because I've had such a good barometer with COVID, they know how quickly that that's going to go down. So where are we going with this? This is a long question. I realize it's meaty. So you have these spiritus and we don't know the volumes that exist. I can, I can tell you now as someone that is able to get some, I don't know the real volume that exists. That's not going to be something that is going to be leaked. Some people probably claim they know. I don't think anyone really knows, do they? Um, but the, these people that have this are going to make damn sure that the price on these does not go down very soon. I'm pretty sure that as of recording this video at this time, remember this is very subjective to your country and to the date that this goes out, but at the minute, a spiritus from TC production with leaves about that long, so maybe, sorry, about that long, so maybe the plant is about that tall, something like that. That's around about $4,000 from what I can deduce from looking on the internet in the limited places that they are available. Now, no one's going to bend on that, even though they're in TC. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, well, let's just wait for it to go down. And it, it will go down, obviously. Those prices will go down. But we are talking a long ass time. That is just my prediction, by the way. So I could be very wrong. We could all laugh at me in a year's time when they're all like $500 a piece or whatever. But the price on these is not going to go down very quickly. And that is because whoever is producing them knows fine well how the market on these types of things likes to go. And they know that they need to keep that price high as long as possible. And they do this by releasing very little. So yes, they're in TC production. I can confirm I have some. But they are not going to be released very quickly. And that is because the value needs to be kept high. I know that's going to make a lot of people angry. That's, it's, I hate saying this because I, I don't want to get like attacked for it for being the messenger essentially, but it is business. I know people think plants grow out the ground. We all have a right to have them. Um, that's just not really true, to be honest. It's the same as a designer handbag, guys, at this point. It's stuff. I've said this before in a video. It's, it's all shit. It's all stuff, right? No one needs these things. So in that sense, it is a bit of a luxury and it will be kept high. Now, I think Spiritus Sancti deserves to be kept high at least for a while because it's Spiritus Sancti and they're not available. Great, cool. But I do foresee that they will be kept high for quite a while, if I'm totally honest with you. Give me two seconds while I just put these back. I'll put this in first because they're taller. Put this back in the bucket. I think I've just trimmed off any of the crap. The uh, the Cebus were much better than the Atas. The Atas weren't terrible, but they could have been better. The Cebus are absolutely fine. Um, the atoms were a bit shit. As for the billeti, I have no idea. Give me one moment, guys. <sighs> Slight interlude, because I've just picked them up. I ordered billeti. These billeti are in the same order. I ordered them a year ago. I ordered a small billeti. This is what I got sent. Literally. Look at this. This is what I got sent. I ordered these one year ago, and I paid for a full billeti. Not a big one. Don't get me wrong. Maybe the standard that I sell that is of small billeti, so maybe at least three leaves, I would say, uh, the leaves maybe being about that long. That's what I got. That's what I got. Not all suppliers are created equal, guys. Choose wisely, um, because that's shit. Um, I have made a complaint, but I'm not expecting anything to happen as a result, because that's how it works. Um, but there you go. Anyway, different conversation. I just want to let you know that this is shit, and I don't know how long these are even going to be with me until they're ready. Right, so there's some root on them, but that's not a plant. You feel me? That's being cut into one-node segments. That is not what was agreed. 
and this was a year ago, and they were paid in advance, and they just sat on orders. So anyway, not to drone on about it too long, the, the Spiritus is out, it's available, I'm telling you now, it's going to come out slow, it's going to be controlled, it's going to be the exact same situation that we have with variegated Monstera. There is a ton of variegated Monstera out there. They're not rare, they are, they're not readily available, they're just being kept behind closed doors. I've said this before. If you think that's bad with variegated Monstera, wait till you see Spiritus 70, you know? Don't get me wrong, it's, it's not a plan that's for everybody, not everyone cares, but I can almost guarantee you that it's going to be a similar journey, really. Um, oh, I don't even need to feel that one. I can see how bad that is. Yay, finally a head cutting of a plant. Finally, in all of these one leafers. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so full disclosure, I do have some available very soon. There is a waiting list on my website. I thought that was the fairest way to do it. So there should be a listing on my website if you're interested. If you're not, just, uh, just block your ears for a minute. Um, there is a link on my website to what looks like a, a sold out Spiritus, essentially. Um, and you put your name on the waiting list and we will contact you for a deposit on the plant. It is, as of recording this video anyway, it's £100 and it's totally refundable. I'll say that right now. Um, if you change your mind about whether you want it or not, or you can't get it or something like that if for some reason we can't give you it if it dies or anything like that then you get that back so it's completely refundable i need you to know that you have my absolute word it is refundable but that's that's how we're doing it at the moment anyway it is a waiting list um what is that honestly guys what is that what is that honest to god and the roots are going is that even okay or is that gone that's gone Tell you what, honestly. So yeah, quality-wise, the, the, the quality of the specimen is as good as the mother plant. I suspect that they are the best quality that you're going to get based on the amount of mothers currently available. Um, yes, it is in TC. Yes, it will become more available. Not at any quick pace. There's no way that they're going to come out for, you know, a couple of hundred quid a plant. It's not going to happen. Um, I suspect that the people that have taken the time and the risk in creating these plants are going to keep it this way for as long as they can. So I think that's what's happening. My personal opinion on TC is that they're, they're not lesser plants or anything. It does mean that they're more available, but it really depends on what the plant is as to how quickly that value is going to drop. So if you'd said something else to me, you know, a different name of a different plant, like some kind of variegated alocasia, variegated zebrina or something, say they're able to produce that by force, um, pluck out the variegates, that price will drop much faster. Because it's not Spiritus, you know? It's shit, but it is what it is. I'd love to know your opinions on TC down below, because I think it is a bit of a love-hate situation, actually. I don't know if that's due to misinformation and myth, or people just don't like the idea of someone capitalizing on something. But, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, guys, honestly, I think everyone capitalizes on houseplants, don't they? I can't sit here and say that I'm not. I own a plant shop, do you know what I mean? Everyone that sells bits and pieces on Facebook is capitalizing on plants. It's just to what extent? I don't have a lab, so I'm not producing it in a lab. If I had a lab, would I do it? Yeah. You know? For me, I, I don't personally have a lot of, oh my God, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm going to hold this to the camera and show you just how bad this is. This is dead, by the way. This is rotted. So that's what I got for Abilitai. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <sighs> yeah, because I'm in the industry, obviously I'm going to have an opinion that sits on a certain, oh, it's just a petiole, on a certain end of the spectrum and it might be different to yours at home. Um, I don't really take issue with it because honestly, most of the houseplants you've got in your house, they've been done the same way. Um, obviously the rare ones are done via propagation, but I've seen all manner of, of plants in TC that are super, super rare because people have worked out that that is the way to go. If you truly have something that is rare and unique and you want to be the one capitalizing on it, then you should really do TC. It's how it is. Um, oh, wow. What the fuck is that? Oh, it's mush. It's mush. Oh, my goodness me. My goodness me. This is a nightmare. I really didn't think there'd be this much rot today, guys. All of that's rot. Unfucking believable. I'll try not to rant about the Bilitai too much. 
Um, but I bought a lot of them. I think I have 50. Do I have 50? That might be a lie. I might have more of this. I think it's 50, but they should be 50 full plants. Um, needless to say, they ain't. I mean, that doesn't even have a growth point on it. Jesus Christ. To round that off, that is my opinion on TC. Um, Spiritus, generally, I think it's okay. It is what it is. The whole of the plant um, market and production, it's going this way. It's going this way. There's going to be some serious shakeups happening, I think. Not maybe this year, but definitely next year when, you know, China gets involved, for example. I think there's going to be some serious shakeups. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinion anyway. Let me know what you think down below if you're for or against TC. I'm actually genuinely curious. Let's have a discussion. Tell me what you think. Tell me what your experience is. The last question I have to talk about today. Uh, I, I think I might have been asked this before. I'm not saying this is like a totally new thing. Oh, that's a good route a new thing that I've been asked, but I've had a few people, I thought it'd be the one, but I actually kept looking through my little answer boxes and tons of people asking it. Basically, I've been asked, why don't I hire additional help at the shop? So, you know, Kaylee, you know that you keep saying all the time that you don't have time to do things. You're like snowed under, you're bitten off more than you can chew, and yet you're not hiring anybody. Like, why is that? Honestly, I think that what happened to me last year in terms of, I'm not going into it, don't worry, the, the whole hate thing, right? I think in terms of that last year, that really, really destroyed my trust that I could ever have in hiring somebody. Um, because if you think about it, if someone comes in here and works for me, they could steal thousands of pounds <laughs> worth of plants with just a pair of scissors and the blink of an eye, they could, I mean, they could, there's no point going into all the ways they could sabotage me, but they could sabotage the water or whatever else. They could generally steal. They can organize a raid with their mates. I don't know. But generally speaking, what I'm, what I'm getting at there is it's trust for me. Um, I get family members telling me that I need to hire. I get it all the time. I get it from everyone. And I do need to hire. I do. I'm not, oh, Jesus, seriously? What the fuck is that? It's not even a cutting at that point. Um, I do get a lot of people telling me to hire. Uh, you name it, they've told me to hire. But it's just, I need to really get over that, that trust issue that I, I admit that I do have. And it, it is directly as a result from all the shit last year. Because guys, I was getting all, all manner of threats, stuff like that. I just still think that I mean, I'm not currently a target or anything as of recording this, but you never know. And I think as soon as the next controversial thing comes about, it's usually me that gets the finger pointed out, right? So I'm just, I'm not really over it. Um, what, what was this in a past life? Looks like a billy, but what even? Does that count as one? Does that count, supplier? Does this count? This one of the billet ties? I don't know, you tell me. Yeah, I just, I just have monumental trust issues, guys. I really do. Um, Obviously, it's no secret, Ben helps out a lot at the minute. I trust Ben with my entire life. There's nothing I wouldn't trust him with, literally. Um, so that's not a problem for me. Uh, no issues there. But as some, far as someone else is concerned, I would have like family um, work with me here, but they're not. They're, they, one, they live miles away too. They're, they're not up for doing that kind of thing. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect them to. It's not something you want to do, even if they did live local. Um, maybe they would, I don't know. I think my mom would love to, but, um, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not something they want to do. So the question is, how do you hire? And if I hired for this shop, what does that look like? Where do I advertise it? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, will people just apply for other reasons? I don't know what those reasons would be, but will they apply because they genuinely want to do the job? You know, will they take the job seriously? You, you just don't know, you know? I never show my full shop all the time on camera, I guess. I know you've seen tours, but it's obviously at the end of the day, you haven't seen what's at the top. I move a lot of the really rare shit out of the way. Um, one, I am not interested in flexing. I've been through this one a hundred times. I couldn't give a shit. Um, but I move a lot of the stuff that maybe I don't want people to see out the way. I've got an element of, of not secrecy, but you know what I mean. I have an element of privacy here that I, I like, you know? Um, the way I operate is is kept between me, myself, and I, and I like that. Bringing someone else in is, is difficult for me. And I'm sure that a lot of people are going to give me comments saying, yes, yes, I know exactly what you mean, because I, th I feel like this is a thing, not specifically to me. I genuinely think this is probably a thing that a lot of business owners probably go through, um, taking that step 
and basically giving someone else the reins to, you know, help you run your business, basically. Hire, hire people or whatever else. I don't think it's just specific to me. Wow, that just, that didn't even try. Oh, that was a leaf. Oh, fuck you. I thought that was a root. I grabbed it wrong. Oh, yeah, I don't, I really don't think it's specific to me at all. I think that a lot of people would probably feel like that. I guess if you've got any advice for me on that subject, that would be absolutely fantastic if you can leave a comment below because I'm really curious to know how to essentially get over that hurdle and, and take the leap of hiring someone. I don't think I'll hire anybody this year. I don't even think I'll hire while I'm in this unit. I think if and when I upgrade again, I would hire then because I, I think I've talked to Ben about this and if and when I move, it would be obviously a bigger place. There's really no option not to hire someone at that point. So I know that it's coming. Um, I, I guess I'm just trying to hold off as long as possible. But it, it is tough because I, I miss stuff every week. Like I, I don't get anywhere near enough done. Um, oh, I'll touch on this as well, actually. It's just popped into my head now. Um, it wasn't a question, but I have had comments on it. And I've had comments on, I think it's my tour on a few different videos, I think. Just anything to do with the shop. I get I get comments like this. And basically, people send me comments saying, I don't understand. You have all these plants, and yet your shop is sold out. Why do you have none to sell? Right. <laughs> I would say this on this video, and if people could just maybe prompt people after this, this would be great, because it is a recurring question. It's very draining to answer it repeatedly all the time. But essentially, I stopped being just a plant shop when I moved into this unit. It is why I moved into this unit because I'm trying to transition now between shop and nursery, okay? So when I was in my last place, uh, you may or may not have seen the tour, that was a plant shop. Yes, I had stuff propagating and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you need a massive place like this to be considered, you know, anything over a shop or shops can't propagate anything. I'm not saying that. But generally speaking, in terms of the volume of stock I had, the speed I could produce it, the rate I could propagate from my own stock, I was a shop and not a nursery. I'm still not a nursery right now, obviously, that's needless to say, but I would honestly call myself, if I had to, if there was an option to, um, I would say that I'm a hybrid of shop and nursery because I really honestly am. I rarely buy in new stuff. As I say, these are a year old. I practically forgot that I'd even order them in, but I am a hybrid of shop and nursery. I do order plants in. I will order 50 of a given plant and they are mothers and I will let maybe a small amount go when they've acclimated, but generally they are there for a long time. And I use them as mothers and I lob the heads off, say if it's like a climbing philodendron, and I prop them and I sell those and then I keep the mothers back. This is because I am not just a shop. I know I look like it on the front end. I know I say, ooh, my shop, my shop. Yes, of course. Um, technically it is a shop. You get what I'm, you get where I'm going with this. Um, but I am genuinely I think of myself as a hybrid between shop and nursery. And if you think of what nurseries do, nobody expects a nursery to clear out of all of their stock, right? That would be weird if there was nothing in a nursery. It's kind of like that for me. It's like walking around a nursery going, I don't understand, they've got all these plants and they're not selling them on or they're not selling them to wholesalers or this happens a lot actually when shops look at nurseries and wholesalers and they say huge rows of plants in the nurseries and they say, yo, can I have some of these? And they go, no, we've got none available. And then the shop's like, sorry, what? You've got 300 there. And it's like, no, those are our mother plants. So what you're seeing when you see those trays full of plants, you're seeing my mother plants. Those aren't things that I've just brought in. I'm acclimating them and I'm sending them out the door. That's what a lot of the other plant shops are doing. And I've gone through that. That's fine. But I've gone through that and I'm out the other side of that now and I'm now trying to become like a mini nursery, we'll call it. I need a name for it. If someone could think of a cool name for like half shop, half nursery, that would be cool because this is definitely not just a shop. This is on its way and I cannot wait until the day that I expand again because I will. Um, it's going to be insane. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't have... I've got plans, obviously, and ideas, but it depends on where I'm at in a couple of years, I think. So it really depends. But that's essentially what I am. So when people say, yo, why do you have all these plants? And yet you're not selling any. I don't understand why you sold out. 
I sell what I what I want to sell when I want to sell it in the same way that, sorry, my hands are falling to bits because they've been soaked. Um, I sell what I want to sell when I want to sell it. I'm in no rush. Um, this is more to me than just turning plants around when I get them in and rehab them out. It's it's way more to me than that. It always has been more the, to me than that. And I think, I don't think that comes off anyway in, in what I do, but essentially that answers that because honestly, I've had a huge influx in that. And I think it's because of the last tour and people have seen huge volumes of plants, huge volumes of plants and me not necessarily selling them. Obviously, sometimes they are ready to sell, but I haven't got around to it because I'm so busy to do a launch. Um, but generally speaking, anyway, that's what's happening. I keep a lot of mothers. I keep at least one tray of mothers usually. So I'm looking at pink splash out of the, you know, the corner of my eye off camera. I have a tray of those. Those are mothers. So it will be a little while before they become available because I don't have many ready. Do I have a lot of pink splash? Yes, absolutely. I've got about 50, but they're not ready to go because I will always have 50 pink splash. You feel me? So it's whatever goes beyond that. So that's probably the end of this. It's not a report with me. We need a new name for these when I'm not reporting anything. Uh, that's the end of this check on and import with me. As I say, these have been in water for less than 48 hours and I am very, very, very unhappy with what I've got. I don't like to really discuss supplies and stuff on camera. This was actually a first with this supplier. It is definitely my last. There is no way in hell that I'm classing, you know, stuff like this as a valid plant. It's not going to happen. I can't even find some of the bad ones. Obviously, I held them up. Like, come on. This is not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Unless you're selling me a one leaf cutting and you tell me that, this is not okay. I don't like being duped. So, will I do anything about it? No, other than express my massive distaste because this was $500 shipping, by the way. Now I know it don't cost that much. I know what it costs for a very large box to be shipped because I do that all the time and that is around $500. The box these came in, seriously, about this, so what's that? Two or three feet by a foot? Mm -mm. Not today, bitch. Not today. Anyway. Run over. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today's video. It was a little bit different, but variety is the spice of life. So there you go. I answered some of your questions. I will, of course, do another report very soon and we will talk some more. Uh, until then, leave any comments you would like to down below about anything I've talked about. I would love to know. If you can think of a cool name that is a hybrid of shop and nursery, that would be awesome. And then I'll start using it because I don't know what to call myself. So that's it, I guess. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Please get one of these t-shirts. They're absolutely sick. Link is down below and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.